And tonight we have a very interesting show. This is about the Street Life Committee. Um, the Street Life is uh, one of the more visible and popular committees of the community board. There are um, many, many issues that come before this committee. If you, for instance, walk down the street, you may see postings for community board hearings. Often it's landmarks or it could be Second Avenue subway issues. But more than often, you will see a notice for a Street Life Committee. And it may be a notice that is placed inside of a, a window of a restaurant or a bar. Because they often will go to the Street Life Committee getting permission for um, um, liquor or, or a sidewalk cafe. Um, so these, um, these issues are, are very important. It makes it a very busy committee. And tonight we have two really important members of the committee here. Nick Viest, who is the co-chair of Street Life Committee, and Faith Bondi, who is a public member, a very unique position. Now, this is actually Nick's second appearance on this program. Thank you very much, Nick. We really appreciate it's it. good to be back again. Nick is the president of the uh, 19th Precinct Community Council, and, um, but he is also in a very uh, important position and here on the Street Life Committee. You're also, I believe, first chair for um, the uh, community board chairmanship. First vice, vice chair, yeah, that's what they Thanks. call Thanks, and uh, you, you fill in for Jackie Ludorf periodically. Okay. Right, I, I uh, sort of next in line when the chairman, Jackie Ludorf, is not able to make a full board meeting, then I'm the next in line to, to fill in and, and help out, uh, basically run the meeting. That's great. That's great um, amount of uh, dedicated um, <laughs> volunteership. I mean, this is right. one of the, the mantras of the president and the, and the mayor now is to volunteer. So thank you sure, for setting no, a good exactly. example. And, and a, a, a lot of community boards have been doing that. Uh, the community board members have been doing it for a long time. And, uh, so, yeah, I think they've all been setting a good example. Especially the community board aid. We have very, a lot of very long time members who have been involved actively, not only in the community board, but in neighborhood associations and, you know, working toward their neighborhood and volunteering and giving their best to improve the quality of life of all the residents. And quality of life is very important for street life. So, um, can we get started in talking about what's the mission and purpose of the Street Life Committee? Nick, do you want to handle that question? Yeah, it, um, the, the basic functions of the Street Life Committee are, are first of all, um, to hear applications for sidewalk cafes from restaurants uh, and bars, and then also to hear applications for liquor licenses or beer and wine licenses, mm -hmm. which are then submitted to, to the SLA, the State Liquor Authority. And so really the uh, Street Life Committee is really the first part of this process. And then the committee makes a determination, a, if you want to call it a recommendation, on that application, which then goes to the full board, to all the community, community board members, then they vote, vote on it, and then that goes to the respective agency, either to the State Liquor Authority or to the Department of Consumer Affairs, which handles uh, sidewalk cafes. Those, those are the primary functions uh, of the committee. Um, a lot of businesses come before the committee. When, I, when I've been to those meetings, they are rapid fire. You guys really handle it very, very well. Uh, typically, do you have a number of how many businesses appear before your committee on an average meeting? Um, you know, we've had uh, as few as, say, eight or ten applications when it's slow. Uh, and then when it's busy, uh, we've had uh, 30 applications <laughs> come in front of us. I mean, we could mm. be there from 7 o'clock until 10.30 at night hearing applications, depending on uh, how many other people come out for the meeting from, from the community, mm -hmm. uh, whether there's controversy involved uh, or just, you know, the sheer number of applications that are, that are being heard that night uh, you know, determines how long that meeting's going to be. Is there seasonality um, to the number of businesses that come out? Generally speaking, in the spring it's busier because that's when a lot of the cafes, uh, you know, uh, restaurants want to get their cafes set up. Mm -hmm. So we probably hear more applications in the spring, some, some in, the, in the fall also. Um, summer, it slows down maybe a little bit. Other than uh, liquor licenses and sidewalk cafes, what other types of issues come before your committee? It, 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 the committee is called street life. So really almost anything that encompasses that, and that could be uh, street vendors. We, we were involved in uh, writing a resolution regarding street vendors. Um, you know, Faith had, had brought up uh, newsstands. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, that comes in front of us. Um, you know, all kinds of uh, different issues uh, that, that uh, involve what, what happens on the street. I will say also that we do get involved when there's a noise complaint from a restaurant or especially bars. We tend to have those kinds of complaints. 
uh, people who uh, live in the building or live across the street from a, a bar that has a uh, has a music system. Mm -hmm. uh, we get a number of those types of complaints. So yeah, those are the types of things that we get involved in. Um, is there um, um, an, have the applications gone down since the economy has weakened? Have you noticed anything like that? I, I haven't seen that. I don't think we've seen that yet, Faith. No. I don't. Do you, you think? Uh, no, I, I would actually say we may have even seen a little bit of an increase in the. Um, sidewalk cafe licenses because people find it as a way to generate new business and interest in the community. But I haven't really seen any slowdown yet. We we haven't seen it. I I, I would say we may we may see it in the future. But I but right now uh, establishments uh, want want to get sidewalk cafes and you know when someone mm -hmm. closes down uh, either has a problem uh, you know goes out of business or what just stops operating uh, there's going to be someone else who fills that void. So you're, we're, I, I think we'll still hear applications. Uh, the, the economics of that business is going, or based on what's happening right now in our economy, is going to change. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but basically, I think uh, you know, we're seeing pretty much the level that we've been seeing. Does your committee interact with other community board committees on, on, on what topics? Not, not really too often. We really have not interacted much with other community boards. We interact with other committees within our community mm -hmm. board. Um, and that could be uh, z on zoning issues, yeah, for we instance. Just we, had, we just had an issue like that. Mm -hmm. Transportation sometimes, things, you know, there there's like dual jurisdiction of certain things that are on the street, and we have um, meetings with transportation on that. Right. What about the bicycle issue? Because that was a hot topic. There was a um, East 60s Neighborhood Association meeting, uh, an annual meeting. That came up. Somebody from transportation was there, and they were talking about that because there's a big issue in the Upper East Side with the bicycle delivery guys, especially in the East 60s, mm -hmm. um, who are there all over the street, the sidewalk. Does that, do you get involved with those topics? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know if you want to comment on that one. Thing. Yeah, well, one of the things that we always do when we're going through liquor licenses or sidewalk cafes, we ask about the establishments about their delivery practices and if they use bicycles and they are supposed to bring in copies of the helmets and the um, uniforms that they give their bicycle um, delivery people so that the, it identifies who they are in case there's a problem. Members of the community can complain to the community board, to 311, to the police department, and there's some way to identify who the guy, the delivery person on the bike is. So we always go through the rules and regulations and we provide them with a pamphlet regarding rules and regulations. And also, um, information about getting um, bicycle stands so that the bicycle, the de bicycle delivery um, bicycles aren't trained up to the trees, which is always a big complaint in the community. And um, so we definitely spend um, a, a good time with the restaurant owners about bicycle safety and ensure that they comply with the rules. We, we, we also, we have stipulations in every single resolution that states that they have to comply with the regulations of the 19th precinct. Um, if they have delivery bicycles. So that's mm. very important. The difficulty comes in enforcement where someone, uh, you have a messenger who, a uh, bicycle messenger who's riding either riding on the sidewalk, maybe going down the, the wrong way down a one-way street. Um, there's no identification. Okay. And uh, a pedestrian is walking, maybe almost gets hit by that person. Um, especially, I think, senior citizens are concerned about that, as, mm. as they should be. The problem is you have some offenders who have no identification, so it's extremely hard to enforce that. They don't, you don't know who those, where those delivery uh, bicyclists work, uh, so it's hard to pin it back. And so from our standpoint, you know, we always ask that the, the applicants have necessary ID uh, you know, for their messengers, so they're read readily identified if there is a, some kind of a violation. Uh, then you know some type of uh, action can be taken. Is there any um, commonality between what you do on the 19th Precinct Community Council and uh, Street Live? Because you'd mentioned uh, the, the bicyclists have to follow regulations of the 19th Precinct. Does that ever do the, any issues cross over? When you there there are issues that do occasionally um, mm -hmm. cross over um, on on those uh, on, on the committee. I've had meetings uh, where. Um, for example, uh, the 19th Precinct has a meeting where they call in all the bar owners uh, once a year and mm -hmm. basically kind of go over the rules of what what they should uh, comply with mm -hmm. to be responsible neighbors. Uh, we have a very similar role right. as uh, on the community board. 
we're we're really there. In in fact, really, I would say that the the role, the primary role of the Street Life Committee, is to uh, is to to be sort of a sounding board and a way for the community to have a say in uh, you know who should get a liquor license and mm -hmm. who should not based on you know how they contribute to the community or how they're a problem. Mm -hmm. Most of them, the vast majority, are are very good establishments. We want the business. It's good for the city. Uh, the city wants the tax dollars. We need that. But we also want good places to eat. This is New York. So, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, th th these are all important functions. But occasionally there are uh, in, uh, establishments uh, who, do who don't comply with the rules, who are bad neighbors. And that's very important. I think that's really an important Excellent. role. One of the most important roles that we have as a community board and as this, in this committee is that people can come here and express... Uh, you know their uh, problems. Uh, let us know about what a problem is. And faith, you know, I think that's maybe one of the original ways how you got involved in this. Right. That I we had come to a community board meeting because we were having a, a problem with a, a noisy establishment in our neighborhood, and we sought redress through the community board. And we were able to actually get some redress. And through that, we became very interested in the functioning of the community board. And started attending meetings thereafter and then eventually became a public member of the Street Life Committee. And so Street Life is probably, as Nick said, the one committee where you get you know, your average community member who's, you know, is fed up with something or even, so, you know, people come and they're not, everyone isn't there complaining. There are people there to support their restaurants. You know, you, yeah. ha you have a restaurant yeah. or um, a lounge or a bar that you go to that is a good neighbor, that is an asset to the community. You know, we enjoy having people come and tout those establishments so that we know we should feel comfortable saying, State Liquor Authority, go ahead and give them a renew their liquor license or DCA, give them... Um, a sidewalk cafe because they're an asset to the community and we like having them. At the same time, when you're having problems and you know you feel like there's no place else to go, the community board and especially Street Life Committee is a great place because then even if um, even though our opinion is only advisory to the SLA, we try and stay involved and follow up and so we not only vote on whether liquor licenses, whether we think liquor licenses should or should not be granted and whether sidewalk cafe should or should not be granted, we follow up with the neighbors and the establishment to try and make sure that there's some sort of redress and that the establishments are attentive to the concerns of the neighborhood. And if they're not, then we try and figure out a way that we can make it better because although this is New York City, people live here. and so you have to balance the needs of both the businesses and the residents and we really that's one of our biggest functions in everything we do is balancing those interests. It, it might be a good point to, to discuss what a public member does and yeah. Faith is a public member as opposed to an actual community board member um, and she was talking about how she came into the process and how uh, residents can come to the meetings mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't know if you want, we can discuss, maybe sure. that's a good idea Please to do, talk yeah. about what a public member does, uh, you know, what your role is on the, on the community, on this particular committee. Um, I'm not a member of the community board as a whole, so I only um, am a member of the Street Life Committee. And so I participate in the meetings that we have on a monthly basis um, in the same way, really, that all the other community board members do, although... I guess in, in some way you can say I represent the members of the public, although the, the community board itself really represents the members of the public, but um, my vote is counted a little separately, and then I don't get to go to the full board meeting and vote um, on, the, on all the issues. But my focus really is the street life issues and what comes before those committees. And so I get to focus more on the concerns of the community rather than, you know, all the issues that come before the community board and um, it gives you a little more um, time to consider everything, you know, with respect to this. Can be, board. You can be a more independent voice well, that's on, true the, too. on the committee mm -hmm. um, and it's, and her perspective is valuable um, because, you know, we're, we, we all serve on the committee. We hear these things 
uh, you know, a lot of, uh, we hear a lot of these applications. <laughs> Sometimes it's helpful to have someone from a little bit outside come in and right. give their views on an issue. Also, it's mm -hmm. a very good way for someone who's interested in getting involved with the community Absolutely. board mm -hmm. to start. They really get an idea of how it functions, how the committee views things, uh, what's important uh, in, in terms of looking at the applications and, and arriving at, uh, you know, a good decision for both the community and for the establishments. So we're very happy to have Faith's participation in this process. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're also very happy to have people from the public to come to our meetings because it actually shows that there is a way, if you have a problem, uh, to get it dealt with at this level. Uh, and I think sometimes people get frustrated when you live in New York, you have a problem and you feel like this is such a big city, maybe there is not a way to get something done. Uh, this is one of the ways to do it. We, we always mm -hmm. advocate 311 as a system, which, which is a very good way of recording what happens and then setting, getting in touch with the right city agency. But the community board plays, and this committee plays an invaluable role in allowing uh, people in uh, the public to come in and voice their concerns. In this case, it's about uh, normally about uh, bars or restaurants, uh, establishments uh, that are, they're either positive or negative uh, you know, in their, in their uh, area. It That's also true. lets us feel comfortable with the decision that we make. So whether it's approving an application because members of the community come in and tell us what a great um, neighbor and asset it is to the community, or either denying an application or trying to get um, an establishment to agree to certain stipulations so that the business is a better neighbor. Mm -hmm. um, it really helps us in our deliberative process to know what the people who are affected every day. We all the members of the community board and the members of our committee live in in various um, parts of the Upper East Side. We don't all live within you know a block or two of each of the establishments that come before us. We don't know them all, so it mm. it, it helps us all immensely to know what the people who live there and deal with these establishments every day experience. That's right. I was at a recent meeting where uh, something came up, and that it was referenced that there had been a, uh, an application before, and many of the neighbors came to complain. And then they were coming before, and they're going, no one's complaining. I guess it's okay. I don't know if I got remember the facts too well, because that is such a rapid-fire committee you guys have. <laughs> right, it's right. just, it's we, hard to, like, stay on top of what everything's going through. It. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, because um, we, we, do that, we place uh, a, a lot of uh, importance on uh, public members' uh, views or, 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 or statements uh, mm -hmm. when they do come to our meetings. It's important, because we feel we represent the, uh, the community. Mm -hmm. That's the, that Absolutely. is it's weighed very heavily in our decisions. Uh, I will say that uh, in cases where there has been a history of uh, noise problems, for instance, and no one shows up, uh, I get a little concerned that yeah. someone may not have seen the notices, okay. and that worries me probably more than anything. Where for whatever reason people may have an issue and they weren't able to get to the meeting, and we don't find out about it, we vote a certain way because there was no complaint. There were no complaints. And then we find out later on that there were some issues uh, with that establishment. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then we have to go back and try to deal with that in another way. And mm -hmm. that, that, to me, that's, uh, you know, that, that's the, probably the more difficult part of this is that making sure everyone in the community uh, knows that this is really where they can voice their uh, uh, views and issues uh, about uh, restaurants and bars. And knowing the history of an establishment is very, I, I've found, is, is always very important because some establishments who have experienced problems have taken the steps to be good neighbors because either they didn't realize it or they were too new and they didn't know how to operate their business in a way that was compatible with the community interest. But through the efforts of the members of the public as well as the members of the community board, you know, they've been able to put in place new procedures that have made them become good neighbors. Mm -hmm. And those that's one of the most invaluable things an establishment can do. And, and the history becomes very important for us to understand. And there are instances where members of the community will come to us and say, they were horrible, we, you know, the noise, the, the um, you know, the, the patrons, everything was terrible. But now, since our last meeting, since our discussions, you know, everything is better and there's no greater satisfaction, at least I can speak for myself and I suspect I speak for members, fellow members of the community, when then knowing that we played a role in making somebody's quality of life better. Yeah. Um, the, 
the, you know, the best establishments, establishments who work really well with the community are the ones who reach out proactively mm, to, their, to the people mm. who either live in their building or who are their neighbors. Uh, you know, when, when there uh, is a history of noise problems, a lot of times I'll ask uh, the applicant, did you reach out to the people who live in your building? You know, you're applying for this. What do they say to you? Even if no one is there, I want to know if they've spoken to those people, uh, if they've, you know, what they say about their discussions. Um, and, and the good applicants will reach out and talk to their uh, residents. And actually, a lot of, in those cases, a lot of times the residents will come in and speak on behalf. So it's one of the things that I recommend for establishments when they're applying uh, is to do the homework in terms of reaching out to your neighbors. Let them know what you want to do with the establishment. Let them know what your hours are going to be. Uh, you know, work with them. Give them a number they can call if there's a problem. And if there is a, rep a problem, respond to it. Deal directly with them and, and make every effort to act in good faith and, and try to work the situation out. That, I think, those are the best establishments who, who can do that. That's a really great point. Can you make any suggestions for um, a new a business, whether new or existing, how best to work with the community board? Because sometimes they, I've seen they've come to your committee and maybe they're not prepared or they don't have the documentation they need. How can they learn what to do to, to get prepared for community board appearance. They, Can you make some suggestions? Well, they should They should always talk, uh, reach out to the board office if there are questions. Mm -hmm. There's a form letter that goes out. It spells out exactly what is required of them prior to the meeting. They should comply with everything that is requested in that letter. Um, and if it's for a liquor license, there are specific parts of the liquor license that we want to see. Um, there's a questionnaire that should be filled out completely. Um, we, you know, the, the, the critical things we want to know about, for instance, are the hours of operation. We want to know, uh, is there live music or not? Uh, are there deliveries? Um, we want to know s sort of what the food drink mix is, just so we know what kind of an establishment it's going to be. Uh, if, if they're serving a lot of food, it's going to be more of a restaurant, obviously. Uh, if, if it's the ratio of food to drink is sort of uh, 10 to 90, then we know it's going to be more of a bar. And there's nothing wrong with a bar, mm -hmm. but it tells us what kind of an establishment it will be. And also, bars are open later. Uh, they're open till 4 a.m. generally. Mm -hmm. uh, some cases might be 2 a.m., but most of the time they're, they have later hours. So there are other issues that that brings up. And then we want to know, uh, you know, have they re reached out to the community, to the people, the residents in the building, what the response has been there. Is there, is there uh, do they need to put soundproofing in, or oh, things like that. Again, going back to the idea that they should do their homework. They mm -hmm. should also, um, I, they don't necessarily need a lawyer, but they should deal with someone who has experience working with the community board, right. okay, who represents, the way it works is you can have a representative come in uh, and, and, and present the application. Uh, it's nice when the owner can come. That's great. We like right. to see that, but it's not a requirement. Oh, interesting. Um, so if you're an owner and you can't be there at the meeting, uh, ha have someone who's knowledgeable and can speak for you also right. and represent you. And basically, if there is a, a, an agreement that has to be made at that meeting, that representative should be able to speak for you and, and make an agreement. Um, and I would say that uh, if you're an owner, uh, you probably should have someone with you also who's, who's familiar with that process. It's, you're fine coming by yourself, but you're better off having somebody who's been through it before. Uh, and they call them expediters. It can be a lawyer. It, you know, it depends. Right. But the person who comes should really, as Nick said, have a, a working knowledge of the establishment, and if, especially and if it's a new establishment, how the establishment is going to be run. And it is important, we, a lot of times if there are issues, um, we ask for stipulations or we ask them to make certain changes in their method of operation or when it comes to sidewalk cafes if we think something's too large for the area or doesn't fit properly or it's going to create um, congestion problems we may ask them to change the configuration and we need somebody who's willing to do that because if they're if they're not willing to work with us then we may deny an application because we don't feel comfortable with it in its current um, form and then that just prolongs the process or winds up in a denial that, you know, could have been an approval mm -hmm. recommendation if somebody with authority would have been there. Um, and going back to something that Nick said before, being proactive, I think, is one of the most important things because there's nothing more frustrating for us on the community board, at least I can speak for myself, than having to be the police officer, you know, trying to 
to regulate things. It's really, it's not our responsibility, it's not the community's responsibility to police an establishment, it's the establishment's responsibility. So when we know that the establishment is taking those proactive steps to run their business in a manner that's compatible with the community, that goes a long way in our minds to feeling comfortable with granting an application or we, we will get involved if there are problems, right. and especially if the, neighbor, if the neighbors or residents come in and they have an issue, um, the, the co-chair or the other co-chair, Cos Bagnoletti, and I will, will, will get involved in mm -hmm. issues and try to follow up and do the best we can with it. Right. We're not enforcement. We're, right. not, no. uh, uh, we're not the Department of Consumer Affairs. We're not the State Liquor Authority. So we have only an advisory role and a role that we hope can be constructive in trying to uh, work out some of the issues that may come up between residents and an establishment. At least by facilitating dialogue between those those two groups. But ultimately an establishment wants good relations with Absolutely. their neighbors. They also want to get an approval from the community <laughs> board. It's mm -hmm. not required 100% uh, to get one in order to get a license, but it's being weighed more heavily now by certainly by the State Liquor Authority and also by Department of Consumer Affairs. So it's in the establishment's best interest to get an approval. All of them want one. Mm -hmm. um, right. And uh, so, you know, we, we work, you, you know, knowing that, uh, you know, that's sort of a little bit of the leverage that we have in trying to resolve some of these situations. We, we try to do that to, to our best ability uh, as well. We're running a little short on time, but one question we had was um, with the kind of international neighborhood that we have, do you have um, a number of people come before the board who have challenges with English? Um, and do you have any um, uh, suggestions for them to make it easier for them yes. to get their communication? We, we have that. We have that occasionally, not a lot, but occasionally. And they can bring, a re again, bring an experienced representative, bring someone who speaks your language and mm -hmm. speaks English. Right. Uh, that always, that, it, it's never a problem in an approval, um, but, but that's what we recommend in those situations. Uh, you know, so that uh, you know, it goes the right way for them. Well, I want to thank you both for being here. This has been fantastic, and I do encourage everybody to come to a Street Life Committee meeting because it's it's very close to us. We walk by these businesses all the time. We we patronize them. Um, it's actually a lot of fun. So, thanks everyone for joining us again. Um, this has been uh, CB8 Speaks. Thanks again, and uh, see you next month. Great to be thank here. You. Thank Great. you. Thank you.